So we arrived yesterday. We uh, the Eurostar, which is wonderful. Have any of you done that? The tunnel, under the tunnel. I held my breath. I thought, well, you know, it's, a, it's quite a long journey, so I'll, I'll hold my breath. Um, but that was a, a great thing. And then what we did, we arrived at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And being tourists, we thought, well, we've got to go and see some sights. So we went straight away, dropped our bags, straight away um, into the heart of, of Antwerp. And it's so beautiful. The weather is like home. It's like London. But, but the city was warm and wonderful. And, but I have yet to have my first waffle. So I believe I can smell over there waffles. So maybe later. I, you've got one there. What have you got? Chocolate? Cream? Uh, oh, lovely. Yeah, so, so I shall have one of those later. So I suppose I should talk a bit about my, I don't know, my career or... or unless you've got any questions straight away... Oh, you're, sorry, you are wait. I didn't know I was... Oh, I've got this lovely gentleman, aren't I? Lucky, I'm sorry. He's here with me. He's going to help me. So that's super. He's been doing a great job. They've been doing all the stuff all day. So I'll hand it over to him now. I feel in very capable hands. Um, first question. They told uh, the 14-year-old Caroline that um, in 2012 she would be here as a special guest on a convention in Antwerp. How would she have reacted? I can't even remember that far back, 14 years old. I'm, a, I'm an old girl, but I'm still here. But what would, he, what would I have said? I would have been amazed for, for a start off. I mean, it's a great privilege and honor to be here with you lot and all the other actors that are here and, and technicians and things. So uh, I, I just, I feel very honored to be here. And, um, you know, it, it, I do go back a long way. I started working when I was 16 and a half, so, and I'm still working, which is, a, I think, a bit of a miracle for me anyway. But it's great to be here. You've worked with legends such as uh, Vincent Price, Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee. Um, at the time, did you have any idea who those people were, or you just rolled in and suddenly you were in the Hammer films and you were like, who are those guys, or were they like, even for you, legends? Well, the absolute legends. I've been very lucky to have my neck bitten by Christopher Lee. That's a, a great experience, ladies. One, if you ever get the chance, I would say do it. But, um, no, I, 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 yes, of course I knew of their work before. I mean, I was young but I knew of their work, but obviously I, I haven't met them before. And I did two films with uh, Vincent Price. I did the two Dr. Fives films, which was uh, quite an experience. I had no dialogue. I was a young actress. I'd done a lot of modeling, but not a lot of acting. And to, um, I had a contract for Hammer, and they wanted me to be Vincent's wife in the two films. But I had no dialogues. But I said, yes, I want to do it because I want to work with this wonderful man. Um, so I did that. And we had, I, I watched him. I, I feel for a young actor or actress who hasn't had any training as such, drama school. But I found I kind of did all my training on film sets. I would watch these people work, watch the lighting, watch the cameras, listen to the actors work, listen to the directors. and. Um, so that was my first one. And then I got to work with Peter Cushing, who was delightful. I worked with him twice. Um, once on Dracula AD, and the next time on um, at the Earth's Core. Peter Cushing and an American actor called Doug McClure. So he was delightful to work with. He was just charming and funny and giving. Um, so I, 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 I looked at this time as, as totally special because these were, and, and Christopher Lee obviously is still around and still working, but these people were iconic figures of the horror world. So I feel very privileged to work with them. And Christopher Lee was, as the Americans say, totally awesome to work with. He was amazing. How do you look back on the Hammer films? Are these, I don't know if you have any kids, but are these the films that you show your kids? and like? <laughs> That's mommy? Uh. <laughs> Actually, my, my daughters, one is 21, who's sort of in a way following my footsteps, and I, I think she wants to do stage, 
as she said, Mum, I want to do it the proper way. Now, I don't quite know what she means, but she wants to do stage, you know, maybe rather than film or film as. She wants to learn it from the ground up, which is great. The other one is more arty and she sings. So the girls have seen some of my work, although they haven't seen Maniac. <laughs> I mean, they can. She's 21. So, um, uh, but I remember the, fir the little, the youngest one, who's now nearly 18, she first saw James Bond. She said they were going to show it on the television. And I, uh, we got some pop popcorn. My James Bond, which was the spy who loved me. We got popcorn and we got a bit of Coca-Cola and stuff and we all sat down to watch it and she was about five so we sat down and we were all ready and she was really excited to see mummy on the screen and so we, we started watching it and I came on and I did my bit as Naomi and the spy and then comes the bit with the helicopter and then of course Roger or maybe Barbara blew me out of the sky in the helicopter and my daughter, who was five, I, her name's Iona, burst, she burst into tears. She said, she said I hate James Bond, Mummy. I hate him. He's horrible and you died. You died. I said, but I'm sitting here. I'm right beside you. She said, no. She said, I saw you. You died. So she said, I'm never going to watch James Bond. But obviously she's 18 now. And she thinks he's quite cool. <laughs> What does it take to be a Bond girl? Is there like a definitive guideline on what is a Bond girl? I, I tell you what, I don't really know. I mean, I feel very, again, very lucky to join that. I was going to say fraternity, but that's men, isn't it? Um, it? It's a kind of a, it's a wonderful legacy to be involved in a Bond film. And to be a Bond woman or lady or girl, not so much a girl, but woman, is, is a very special honor. My part was very small in The Spy Who Loved Me, but I think they cheat Cubby Broccoli, who was the then producer, and his daughter now, uh, Barbara Broccoli, they choose their women really quite well. You know, they, they, each woman that I've certainly met, um, and I met a few when we do these conventions, is very special. They have kind of unique qualities. They're all very strong, strong women in their own right. And, and they bring very special quality to screen and, and real life. So I'm not quite sure. I think, I would think for a Bond film, you have to have a good sense of humor. I'd be a bit naughty. Uh, I'm going to be frank here and say that you're, you're often portrayed as a lust object. Or, or so. um, how do you feel about that as you're getting older? Did you still look graphic? Um, <laughs> you made my day. A lust object. I've never heard that before. Um, that's rather sweet, actually. Uh, I suppose, obviously, when you're young and you, you look kind of okay, are we twisted up? What? What are we looking at? What can you do? Okay. <laughs> I've forgotten where I was. That's completely thrown me off now. Yeah, um, I have forgotten actually. Oh, lust object. Okay, sorry, we're back to lust object. <laughs> I've gone quite flushed. Um, yeah, no, no, when you're young and, and you're quite, and you kind of are okay. You know, it's, it's a strange thing really, but I look back and, and, and you look, and I look.